Okay, next example four here. Um, example four, it is uh, about experiments that we have mentioned in the teaching video. And what it does is to heat up some water. Okay, so uh, here, this is the joule meter, which is the measurement of how much energy is used by this heater. You can see there is an uh, energy supply and then we'll go through the joule meter and then the energy is supplied to the heater. And thermometer is measuring the temperature of the water, of course. Stirrer, why do we have to add the stirrer? Because uh, we want all the water to be heated up, not just part of it that we measured. So the stirrer will keep everything uh, have an even temperature, okay? Uh, but we, have to, we also have to know how does a joule meter work. If you have a Mui Hei Biu, uh, the, measure, the, the device that measures how much energy your home uses, you have experienced that. For example, there is a four digit number, just say Lok Chat, and then someone will come to your home and ding dong, and then he copy this number down. And three months later, he comes again. Maybe it is Sam um, Lok. Okay, and then that is the new reading. They re never reset the reading. Uh, so, how much energy is used within these three months? Then, this is the starting value. This is the final value. So, what he does, the, the, the person who comes to your home and copy things, he will calculate the difference between the two values between the value today and three months before 3568-1467-2101 and then he will tell you okay this amount is how much energy you used within this period of time so this is the uh, uh, example of Mui Hei Biu how does it work and then for these two reading it also works the same way before the experiment starts, the joule meter already have a certain value or reading here in the box. You can read it. And then uh, after the experiment, it will have uh, this plate will rotate and rotate and the number will increase. Increase to what value? 6100 in this experiment. It changed from this to this. So what is the energy used between the start and the end of the experiment? That is Joe, that is the amount of energy used in the experiment. Okay, so uh, this part is explained, then we should be able to calculate the specific heat capacity very easily. We want to calculate the specific heat capacity. Do you still remember what it is? Q yu mc delta t. The specific heat capacity is C. So when we want to make, we want to calculate it, we make subject of it. So C yu m and delta t del go hui. So Q chui m delta t. That is the formula we make up to calculate C, the value of C. And since we already have this Jo to plug into Q, then we uh, would like to know what is M and what is uh, delta T. Okay, so the mass of the water is mass is here, ling dim e kg. And the temperature is here from 20 to 37. So 17 degrees Celsius. So use the calculator. C then you specific heat capacity. But uh, in physics, usually we just use three significant figures. 
sum sec fig and the unit is oh sorry the unit is the unit is joule per kilogram per degree Celsius. Ah, uh, I should show you here. Okay, so the uh, energy is final minus initial. The temperature final minus initial, and then make subject of C, you will have this equation. Okay. Is it too messy? I'm sorry. Bear with me. We can do that. The standard value of specific heat capacity of water is say Yi Lang Lang. Okay, this is the theoretical value or the accurate measurement value. But the experiment do in the school have errors. And let's have a look. Say say yat leng is what we calculated, and say yi leng leng is the true value. And then, is it uh, what what uh, it is uh, overestimate? Okay, our measurement is larger than it actually is. And let's see how how large the percentage difference is. So final minus initial divided by the initial value and then times 100%. So after the calculation, you can see it is 5%. And it also asks us, what is the possible source of error? Actually, we are overestimated the specific heat capacity. And we know that the specific heat capacity is how difficult it is to heat things up. Right, so if we imagine it to be too big, that means we thought the water have absorbed more energy. We thought it absorbs more energy than it actually does. So what? Where does the extra energy goes? Have a look here. So the answer here you can see in part C is energy loss to the surrounding or the energy used to heat up the carb, the stirrer and the thermometer. Okay. Um, so let's uh, imagine there is when the water become very hot, the heat will be lost to the air or the environment as well. So this is the heat loss to the surrounding. Remember these few words, heat loss to the surrounding. This is used all the time when we because this is the um, uh, one of the major reason of why the experiment is not accurate and the other part is that the the stirrer the stirrer the thermometer and the cup all will absorb some of the energy as well so when we calculate in the experiment we thought all this energy is also absorbed by the water which is not true in the case so or the yun wang jodi shui will overestimate the actual value but five percent not too big this is because uh the energy needed for water is actually very large so compared to a very large value the loss is not too significant okay and part d the last part is how do we reduce the uh, how do we reduce the error how do we increase the accuracy then if the problem is the energy loss to the surrounding we try to keep it uh, tight try to reduce the energy loss and one of the method mentioned here is to wrap the cup with cotton wool Use some cotton wool, yong min fa bao sa koi. And then, when when the insulation, zhe ga yi ga da hou di, bo wan bo da hou di, then the energy loss to the surrounding will be reduced, and therefore it can increase the accuracy. Okay. Example four: cut 